money and credit money is the current medium of exchange in the form of coins and notes whereas credit is the ability of a customer to obtain goods or services before payment based on the trust that payment will be made in the future a person holding money can easily exchange it for any commodity or service that he or she might want thus everyone prefers to receive payments in money and then exchange the money for things that they want both parties have to agree to sell and buy each other's commodities this is known as double coincidence of want in a barter system where goods are directly exchanged without the use of money double coincidence of wants is an essential feature for example if a shoe manufacturer exchanges his shoes for money he can purchase wheat or any other commodity in the market since money acts as an intermediate in the exchange process it is called a medium of exchange now let's learn about the modern forms of money first is currency modern forms of money include currency that is paper notes and coins in india the reserve bank of india issues currency notes on behalf of the central government as per indian law no other individual or organization is allowed to issue currency no individual in india can legally refuse a payment made in rupees hence the rupee is widely accepted as a medium of exchange here we can see rupees and notes as medium of exchange next modern form of money are deposits with banks workers who receive their salaries at the end of each month have extra cash at the beginning of the month they deposit it with the bank by opening a bank account in their name banks accept the deposits and also pay an amount as interest on the deposit in this way people ma people's money is safe with the banks and it earns an amount as interest what is a check a check is a paper instructing the bank to pay a specific amount from the person's account to the person in whose name the check has been issued the facility of checks against demand deposit makes it possible to directly settle payments without the use of cash here is a check the payment done to the person is written here the rupees are written here the rupees in numbers are written here the account number is written and the person's signature is done here here the date is written loan activities of banks banks make use of the deposits to meet the loan requirements of the people in this way banks mediate between those who have surplus funds called the depositors and those who are in need of these funds called the borrowers now we'll see two different credit situations one is a festival season and the other is an example of a person called swapna credit or loan refers to an agreement in which the lender supplies the borrower with money goods or services in return for the promise of future payment let us see the first example of festival season to understand the credit situation let us take an example of a person called salim who is a shoe manufacturer during the festive season the shoe manufacturer salim received an order from a large trader in town for 3000 pair of shoes to be delivered in a month time to complete production on time salim has to hire few more workers for stitching and pasting work he has to purchase the raw material to meet these expenses Salim obtained loans from two sources. First, he asked the leather supplier to supply leather now and promises to pay him later. Second, he obtains loan in cash from the last trader as advance payment 
for thousand pairs of shoes with the promise to deliver the whole order by the end of the month. At the end of the month, Salim is able to deliver the order, make a good profit, and repay the money that he had borrowed. This shows an importance of credit. Next example will take of a person called Swapna, who is dealing with the problem. Swapna, a small farmer, grows groundnut on her three acres of land. She takes a loan from the money lender to meet the expenses of cultivation, hoping that her harvest would help repay the loan. Midway through the season, the crop is hit by pest and the crop fails. Though Swapna sprays her crops with expensive pesticides, it makes little difference. She is unable to repay the money lender and the debt grows over the year into a large amount. Next year, Swapna takes a fresh loan for cultivation. It is a normal crop this year, but the earnings are not enough to cover the old loan. She is caught in debt. She has to sell a part of the land to pay off the debt. These are the two situations to help us understand the importance of credit or loan. Now we learn about the terms of credit. Collateral is an asset that the borrower owns, such as land, building, vehicle, livestock, deposits with banks, and uses this as a guarantee to a lender until the loan is repaid. Interest rate, collateral and documentation requirement, and the mode of repayment together comprise what is called the terms of credit. Here we can see the documentary credit cycle. There are several types of cooperatives possible such as farmers cooperatives, weavers cooperatives, industrial workers cooperatives etc. Here we can see a minister providing aid to a person. These funds are used to provide loans to members. Once these loans are repaid, another round of lending can take place. Formal Sector Credit in India The various types of loans can be conveniently grouped as formal sector loans and informal sector loans. The Sources of Credit Informal sources are non-government sources such as family, friends, money lenders, traders, etc. Whereas formal sources are government-owned institutions such as commercial banks, regional, rural banks, etc. These are the source of credit, money lenders, traders, relatives and friends, others, cooperative societies, banks and landlords. Money lenders constitute 30% whereas landlords just 1%. The former are loans from banks and cooperatives while the informal lenders include money lenders, traders, employers, relatives and friends etc. The Reserve Bank of India supervises the functioning of formal sources of loans. Formal and informal credit will see who gets what. It is necessary that banks and cooperatives increase their lending particularly in the rural areas so that the dependence on informal sources of credit reduces. Secondly, while formal sector loans need to expand, it is also necessary that everyone receives these loans. It is important that the formal credit is distributed more equally so that the poor can benefit from the cheaper loans. Loans should be easily available for the poor, their survival. Self-help groups for the poor the idea is to organize rural poor, in particular women, into small self-help groups and pool their savings. A typical self-help group has 15 to 20 members, usually belonging to one neighborhood, who meet and save regularly. These are self-help groups, improving livelihoods through community-based enterprises. Members can take small loans from the group itself to meet their needs. 
The group charges interest on these loans, but this is still less than what the money lender charges. After a year or two, if the group is regular in savings, it becomes eligible for availing loan from the bank. Thus, the SHGs have borrowers overcome the problem of lack of collateral. They can get timely loans for a variety of purposes and at a reasonable interest rate. Let's take example of Grameen Bank of Bangladesh. Grameen Bank of Bangladesh is one of the biggest success stories in reaching the poor to meet their credit needs at reasonable rates. So we can say it is essential that the total formal sector credit increases so that the dependence on the more expensive informal credit becomes less. Also, the poor should get a much greater share of formal loans from banks, cooperative societies, etc. Both these steps are important for development. Money and credit, modern forms of money, currency, in India, the Reserve Bank of India issues currency notes on behalf of the central government. This is an example of a check. The facility of checks against demand deposits make it possible to directly settle payments without the use of cash. Loan activities of banks, the documentary credit cycle, formal sector credit in India, sources of credit, informal sources, formal sources. Formal sector credit in India, formal and informal credit. It is important that the formal credit is distributed more equally so that the poor can benefit from the cheaper loans. Self-help groups for the poor, Grameen Bank of Bangladesh is one of the biggest success stories in reaching the poor to meet their credit needs at reasonable rates.